Well, hello again. Here we are with another daily devotional, and this one again from Matthew chapter 7 and verse 13. And I will read the text to you again. And again, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. So we've talked about um, the uh, um, two uh, real directions, real directions, that there are two places. There is uh, the narrow gate that leads to life, and then there is the broad road that leads to destruction. So what I want to talk about now is the two destinations, because uh, there is a destination point here. Anytime you go on a journey, usually you have a destination point where you are headed for. And the truth of the matter is that we're all on a journey and we're on a journey going through life. And there is uh, a destination that we are either going to go to one place or the other. There's only two destinations, friends. There's not a third one. There's only two. And I just want to say to you that if you want to look further and even in more detail as to these two destinations, I'm just going to give a quick overview in this lesson. You can go to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you're not already there, if you're, uh, you may be uh, picking this up on Facebook or some other feed, but you can go to my new YouTube channel, Truth To You, Pierre Chasson, and you can go to the playlist and you will find a playlist of what happens after death. And in there, there are 12 lessons, 12 uh, teachings on what happens after death. And that will give you much more detail than I'll be able to share with you here. However, we're in the text here. Jesus is speaking to them and he encourages them uh, to, to, to understand that there are realities here that must be faced. There is a, a, a real... Um, directions given here and the direction is go by the narrow gate because if you continue on the broad way you will be lead, led to destruction so the two destinations that are given here one through the narrow gate it is the road that leads to life the second the wide gate that leads to destruction those are the words of jesus christ it leads to destruction so my friend if there are two destinations, what is your destination? Now, we can say, well, that depends on whether you go through the narrow gate. Because we can see, he doesn't tell people, don't go down the broad road. So what he says here, if you notice, he says, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. He didn't say, don't go in the wide, the wide gate or go down the broad road because we are already on it. Sin puts you on the broad road. And that's all of us. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that is why we need the narrow gate as we have already emphasized in other passages. But let's talk for a moment about the two destinations so that you might have clarity that one is a place that leads to destruction. That is the word of God. Now, he doesn't say it leads to annihilation, but it leads to destruction. Because in the word of God, it does not teach annihilation. Jesus was teaching in the gospel of Luke. And of course, we remember the passage where he said, strive to enter into the straight gate, the narrow gate. But also in Luke chapter 16, verse 19, there was a certain rich man, I know this may be familiar to you, but here it is, who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate and desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Besides this, the dogs came and licked his sores. Now, Jesus, of course, is teaching uh, the, the reality here, he's teaching uh, people who thought the rich would go to heaven and the poor would be lost. That's what they thought. They thought God must be with the rich or they wouldn't be rich. So the richness was evidence of God's blessing 
And the poverty of the poor man was evidence of God's curse. And so when Jesus is teaching a parable and he suddenly says, no, the rich man died and was buried. And when hell, he lifted up his eyes. They would be like, what? The poor man was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. What? Really? Yes, really. Why? Because they had the wrong idea. They th had a whole different concept of what it was to be a believer and where God's blessing really lies. God's blessing lies in Jesus Christ alone. It has nothing to do with how much coinage you have. So it just tells us that the beggar died and he was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man died and buried, but the rich man was in torment, in torment in Hades. He lifted up his eyes and he saw Abraham far off and Lazarus in his bosom. He is in torment. Now let's just take this and understand the real destination of destruction is a place of torment. That's what Jesus taught. I'm not making it up. So much so that he cried in torment. And he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. He's looking for mercy. And he found none. Do you understand this? That a person who stays on the broad road and goes into destruction goes into a place of torment. The words of Jesus, and it's real. My friend, Hades, hell is real. Heaven is real. These are real destinations. Thank God there's a real heaven for a destination point. But I don't want you to find yourself in this destination point because there's no getting out. There's no getting out. This is what he said. He said this, the only time you get out of this place is to go into a lake of fire later. That's what the Bible teaches. I can't sugarcoat that. It's not possible. And I'm not going to try to explain away the words of Jesus. This man, the rich man, he said, have mercy on me, send Lazarus to me, may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. There's no question that this is torture. However you want to describe it, it's not a good place, friends. And it's a place of torment. And that is where he landed. Abraham said, you remember in your lifetime you had your good things and likewise Lazarus is evil. Now he's comforted and you are tormented. It's not going to happen. Besides all this, there's between you and us a great gulf fix. No one, so that no one who would want to pass from here to you cannot, and those from there cannot pass to us. There's no way out. No way out. Do you want to know this real destination for lost sinners? There's no way out. Once you're there, you're there. Suddenly the rich man is resigned to it, and he realizes, I've got five brothers still alive on earth. So don't think that, oh, this torment will happen somewhere way down in the future. It is immediate after death. Immediately in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. And he realized it, and he knew it, and he knew his brothers were still on earth, still alive, and he says they need to be warned that they don't come to this place of torment. There was no thought, oh, I want them to come. Well, he was wanting Lazarus to come there for his own sake. He says, just send Lazarus over here, as if Lazarus was his peon, as if he was his uh, uh, one he could do whatever with. No, 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 it's not going to happen. Nobody goes from heaven to hell. That's good news. Because once you're there, you're there. But nobody goes from hell to heaven. That's bad news, because once you're there, you're there. And so do you see how important it is to enter the straight gate because of the two destinations? Because one is destruction and one is life. The truth and the reality of it is, friends, if you're on the broad road, there's a good measure of destruction already in your life. Because sin is a hard taskmaster. But the fullness of that destruction will be realized when you land in this place and can't get out. I know that's hard stuff. But it's in the Word of God. 
And then we go to Revelation chapter 20, and it tells us, whoever's name was not found written in the book of life is cast into a lake of fire. That's what the word of God says. So what do we do with this? You make sure you're heading in the right destination. You can be. Get in the narrow gate. Jesus said, strive to enter into the straight gate, the narrow gate, and do it now. Because he actually said, and I quoted this last time, many will seek to enter in and they will not be able when the door is shut. What door? That's the gateway of salvation. And that door shuts in two ways. One, when you die, the door is shut. Two, uh, the door shuts on you when you die, as I already said, but then it also shuts on you when you reject the Lord Jesus Christ for the last time. Then it's too late. The door will shut. It will shut also at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It'll be too late then. It'll be the end of it. So my friend, my urgent cry to you is today, do not say no to Jesus Christ, but come in the narrow gate now. Why? Because the other one leads to destruction. But praise God, the narrow gate leads to life. Life. And you receive a measure of that life the moment that you enter into the narrow gate. You will experience the life of God, the life of Christ. You will experience the blessing of God. The union with God will be yours. There's life immediately, just like there's death immediately on the broad road. But then there is the wonderful culmination of it all at the end. So that the Apostle Paul could say with assurance in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, when I'm absent from this body, I'm present with the Lord present with the Lord. This is God's call. This is what he invites us to. Every measure of rest and blessing and, and goodness that we experience now, there is more to come in Jesus Christ. So much so, when we come to the end of the book and we look in the book of Revelation, we have these words in Revelation 21 too. This is the final culmination then I, John, John had this vision. I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride for her husband. This is the church of God. That's the bride. This is the people of God. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Life, union, complete, wonderful, beautiful union with God. And listen to this. He will dwell with them, make his home with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. That's life. Union with God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And there will be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying, there shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. He said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. He said to me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. It's the the, the, uh, the first letter and the last letter in the Greek alphabet. In other words, I am A to Z. I am the beginning and the end, and I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. The fountain of the water of life. No wonder Jesus said that this was the gateway, the doorway that leads to life. And it does. It does, my friend. So this is one destination, and we've already read the other one. And listen to what it says in the same passage, just so that you understand the reality. While there are those who are in this place of enjoyment in heaven, there are those in another place. 
I don't know how God deals with that. But somehow, former things have passed away. And they will no longer be part of our new existence in heaven. He who overcomes will inherit all things. I will be his God and he shall be my son. And the ones that overcome are the ones who believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. First John teaches us that. Who is he that overcomes, but he that believes. But then there's a but here. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, that's deceiving the mind through the use of drugs, idolaters, people who worship anything but God, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So my friends, I felt it was necessary in looking at these statements of Jesus to understand that there are two destination points. It's either one or it's the other. Which road are you on? If you are on the broad road, then you are heading straight to hell. And it doesn't matter what you do or say, if you do not come to Jesus Christ, you will miss heaven. If you are on the narrow road, you're heading straight to heaven. Good news. If you come through the gate and you're on the narrow road, then you are in a place of safety. Difficulties? Absolutely. But safe in the arms of Jesus. The good shepherd now has you and it is his job to get you home. Just do not be deceived into thinking that you're on the narrow road. In the meantime, you're still on the wide road. Because if you're on the narrow road, then God will be transforming your life. And if your life is not being transformed, if there is no change in your behavior, then you might be on the narrow road in your head, but you're not really there. Don't be deceived. The devil likes to imitate the narrow road, the narrow gate. He likes to make it look like you're there when you're not. Now, I don't want you to be afraid if you're a true believer, but I want you to examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. Paul wrote that to the Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he challenged the Corinthians because of their behavior. And I want to challenge you. Make sure you're on the narrow road. Make sure that you've come to Jesus Christ, that you've repented and put your faith and trust in him. Not gone to a church meeting and had a nice feeling, but you actually repented and put your faith in Jesus Christ. That is how you get on the narrow road, through the cross, through what Christ did for you, and by faith you trust him, and he will save you, and that will be your destination. Hallelujah for that destination of heaven. But horror of horrors to those who refuse to go in the narrow gate for whatever reasons, None of them will hold water, friends. God has the open door. If you don't come in, you can blame no one but yourself. And I challenge you to enter in by the straight gate, the narrow gate, and do it now. Because those are the words of Jesus Christ. Strong warning indeed. We will continue as we see him amplifying the two different contrasts right to the end of this sermon now, saying there are some that are in this camp and there are some that are in this camp. And I want more than anything for you to know which camp you're in because, because my friend, if you're on the narrow road to life, you can only rejoice in it. If you're on the broad road to destruction, you can still get in the narrow road. You can still get in the narrow gate. You can still go to life. You don't have to go to that destination point. You can turn, repent, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask him to be your savior. Call on his name and he will save you. I encourage you to it. I encourage you to look to him and live. Be saved today. Just ask him. Just believe in him. Put your faith in him. But do it in faith, in dependence with a repentant heart. Lord, I'm willing to turn my entire life over to you. Doesn't mean you have the power, but turn to him now because there are two destinations and one leads to destruction and one leads to life. Which road are you on and which road will you take? Well, friends, 
while there is true there's a heaven there's a hell but i want you to know i want you to think about this god is inviting you to heaven a great and happy joyful place that can be yours by faith in jesus christ so don't put it off come in the narrow gate is there difficulties in this life absolutely but the day will come as i've already read all those sorrows will be over this song is called heaven's jubilee some glad morning we shall see jesus in the air coming after you and me joy is ours to share what rejoicing there will be when the saint shall rise headed for that jubilee yonder in the skies oh what singing oh what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise oh what glory hallelujah when we meet our blessed savior in the sky seems that now i almost see all the saints again rising for that jubilee that is just ahead in the twinkling of an eye change with them to be all the living saints to fly to heaven's jubilee oh what singing singing oh what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise oh what glory hallelujah when we meet our blessed savior in the skies when with all that heavenly host we begin to sing singing in the holy ghost how the heavens will ring millions there will join the song with them we shall be Praising Christ the Rageous Long of Heaven's Jubilee. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. Yes, friends, there is that destination. Take the right road and you'll land in the right place. That's common sense. <laughs>